Alrighty. So here we go with Nahiri. Uh, I called it prison in Moto, but I think just the word moon is probably enough. So named after modern staple Blood Moon, which says non-basic lands are mountains. So there's a large number of, well, a medium number of greedy mana bases that can get completely locked out of the game when all of their lands suddenly tap for red. With the biggest boost to Blood Moon right now being the number of decks that are trying to leverage the card Mystic Sanctuary, uh, Blood Moon does not allow that to happen. What else are we doing in this deck? Well, we're playing 10 one-mana ramp spells. We're playing the Wombo Kombar of uh, Utopia Sprawl and uh, Arbor Elf. So if you play Arbor Elf on turn 1, and then you play Utopia Sprawl on turn 2, enchanting a forest as it must, you can then have 4 mana available on turn 2. So, uh, But even with a single piece of acceleration, we've got a large number of 3 drops we can play. So we're executing the 1-3 skip, as my friends at the Faithless Brewing podcast like to refer to it, but we also have the option of the 1-4 skip on a crazy draw. So what spells are we choosing to play with that? Well, obviously Blood Moon, because that's the 3-mana enchantment, but we're also playing Chandra, Acolyte of Flame. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what the value of this is, other than the 0 that puts a loyalty counter on each red planeswalker you control so all of our other planeswalkers are red so i suppose that's that's pretty good and her other two abilities are much less uh impactful the minus two allows us to recast a spell out of our graveyard which in our main deck is only lightning bolt and then her ze other zero is uh we get two one one red elemental creatures tokens which we can attack with so i think she's just there with synergy with the other walkers uh, we've also got season pyromancer which allows us to dig through our deck for other cards we might want now nahiri uh is the namesake of this deck so she says uh plus two you may discard a card if you do draw a card minus two exile target enchantment tapped artifact or tapped creature and minus eight search your library for an artifact or creature card put it on the battlefield and shuffle your library it gains haste return it to your hand so what we've got for nahiri to bring in is big mama emrakul the classic emrakul the aeons torn it's 15 15 uh and when it attacks they must sacrifice six permanents for its annihilator six it's also got flying and protection from colored spells so generally gonna attack once and then put your opponent uh, out of their misery. And then we've got uh, Sark in the Masterless, Chandra Torch of Defiance, and Chandra Awakened of Inferno. So just a plethora of Planeswalkers to leverage out of our mana. So this is very similar game plan to the Mono Green Walkers deck out of um, Pioneer that I have been really enjoying. And then our sideboard has a variety of things to try to address the modern metagame. I'm sure we will see what's going on as we get into them. So... Feeling mostly better. I'm not feeling, not feeling uh, ready to to bust out a saffron olive impression yet, but pretty close. My voice would just crack, horrifyingly. All right, nice quick. Q. Insano jumping up to the uh, two spot. We've queued up into Gracias por tanto. All right, so this opener has one piece of acceleration, three lands, two bolts, and a six mana payoff, which I think. We're going to throw this back, especially on the draw. We can do better. Uh, this is better. I'm going to keep it. Um, it's not great, but it's better. I'm going to toss Snow-Covered Mountain, keep everything else. So we're going to play turn one birds, possibly turn two nothing. Maybe we can draw one of our one of our three drops. Um, there's a three drop. We can play tap birds on turn two, or tap land on turn two if we run into any trouble. It's a good time for Birds of Paradise right now, generally speaking. Uh, it seems like a lot of people are not interacting, so I normally hate mana dorks like this, but there's enough decks in the format that are not interacting, so. Looks like we may be, yeah, I guess some Urza nonsense. 
Grixis Urza nonsense, most likely. So we get to go Season Pyromancer. Which must discard two cards, so we'll be discarding Wooded Foothills and Sarkin, most likely. Which does not feel the best. What up, my friend, Brian? True. True. Can't let the internet in on our sweet team in jokes. All right. Arbor Elf's a bit of a blah draw here. I think we're just going to go... So I don't need double green for anything in the deck. So I think... I'm going to use this to fetch red and white in case I need it in the future. Yeah, because I definitely want to have double red in my mana base. And then we go red, red one. So we're going to ditch the Arbor Elf to the Pyromancer. So it'll be Arbor Elf and Sarkin. Make some dudes. Drew another season Pyromancer. That's not bad at all. Hopefully next turn we get to interact. Just chillin'. That's cool, man. That's straight up, dog. I'm gonna play some nonsense tonight in Modern. Yesterday I ran all aggro decks. It was wild. Alright, uh, I think we're gonna go fetch Montagna. Get me a mountain here. And uh, fire off this Chandra. See if we can't get rid of this Goblin Engineer. Uh, if they have, yeah, if they had um, Metallic Rebuke there, they wouldn't have been able to pay for it. They can, yeah, they can swap in their Chromatic Star there, so they'll get a redraw next turn. Oh, this might be a Breach deck, actually. Could be. Them being choked on mana is really good for us, then. It's probably Grixis versus... Oh, this is Thoughtseize? What are you up to? <laughs> Scooping is what they're up to. Got it. Cool. All right. Um, so Goblin Engineer says I'm bringing in Rip. I wonder if I want Fulminator Mage. And then probably Ancient Grudge. I think... So I'll target black or red permanent. Yeah, I think so. These six would be fine. Cut one Sarkan. And the Blood Moons? I don't think Blood Moons are particularly good here. Um, they're an Astrolabe deck. And Lightning Bolt probably only kills their Goblin Engineers and possibly their Emery if they're playing Emery, but it doesn't kill Urza, so. I don't mind keeping a couple of Lightning Bolts, but generally speaking, I don't need so many. Okay, let's rock and roll. Rock and rumble. Ugh. Brick house, baby. Brick. House. Now here he has such a sick art. Just just destroying, what is it, Markov Manor. And then bringing mom home. Big Mama Emrakul, the great spaghetti monster. So this hand is nuts if we draw a Utopia Sprawl, but it's pretty good even if we don't. Okay, uh, so this can get me a forest. That'll get me white if I need it, so. I don't need to preserve my life total, like, overly aggressively, but if I draw Utopia Sprawl, I do want access to a basic um, forest. They can be playing things like Field of Ruin, or... Uh, it's not likely, but it's possible. Doom, 
ding 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 yeah. Oh. We did the thing, Brian. Okay. So... The question is, do I want to play Chandra and a bird? Or just Pyromancer? I think it's just Pyromancer and a bird. Um, so, shock that. Put that there. Put it on red. So tap be tap. Untap. Tap a tap a tap a. Um, birds. And Pyromancer. Okay, I think Blood Moon actually might be better in this matchup than I thought. Sure, you can bubble me. Okay. Um, I think. Do I want to keep one of these Chandras? Ah. Oh, not that good. Now, let's just get some pressure on the board. Hey, look! We got a Nahiri. Sweet. Um, so Nahiri only exiles tapped artifacts, but they do have reasons they will tap their artifacts in uh, in that deck. Things like War of Invention or Urza. So it is possible. Oh! Fiend! Alright, uh... For anyone who doesn't understand, I, uh, I love the, the pose of Fulminator Mage. This guy is just yes, queen. Alright, so one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so I can do everything this turn? Well, this is just all kinds of broken, isn't it? Alright, um... Don't think the color matters, but I'm gonna get Sacred Foundry and shock it in. So green red, untap, green red, so play Fulminator. And then yeah, I have everything else I need. Uh, Nahiti. Okay, uh, let's kill the red source. I think it's slightly more valuable. And then I think with Nahiri, I just wanna loot. And I definitely want to discard my Mesa, just to see if we can gas up a little bit. Drawing Foothills is not the end of the world, so... And we've got them thoroughly choked on mana, so they, they had a bit of a rough draw, and I think... I think they're toast here. Oh, Mox Amber is a good draw. Ooh, they got Thopter Sword going, huh? They have no mana. I can exile their Mox Amber right now? Do it. Yeah, good for you. Attack my Nahiri. Hi, Roy. Alright, so I can play Pyromancer here and just draw two. So Pyromancer, um, very unusually to these kind of effects, if you don't have cards in your hand, you just get to discard zero and draw two, which is gross. Um, it's incredibly powerful. You don't get any tokens, but, well, that's pretty lackluster, huh? Alright, so I can swing for three. I think if I hadn't, if I'd left something up to block the Emery last turn, so I should have left my two elementals back, um, thinking back on it. I think exiling their tap mana is the highest upside right now, which feels a little weird, but there it is. Oh, and I should have attacked with Arbor Elf here. No reason not to. Okay, they did get a second land, so they got Thopter Sword going. Plus Nahiri drawing them extra cards, so... We're not through this one yet. Alright, so... See what we can redraw. Another Pyromancer. That's not too bad. Uh, 
Uh, I'm gonna get another elemental out of this, plus another two looks. Oof! I guess there's a lot of mana sources in this deck. Alright, so I can attack for six this turn. They can make a 2 3 Thopter and a 1 1 Thopter. They eat one of my Pyromancers. And they can start attacking my Nahiri with Flyers next turn. Huh. It's going to go badly very quickly. Hmm. So I think we just swing in with everything except for the bird. I just want to put as much pressure as the, on them as possible. Play the Arbor Elf after combat and then... <coughs> they're going to gain 2 life. They're going to have a 2-3. The 2-3 can bonk my Nahiri. I'd like to draw my Ancient Grudge ASAP. So I get at least two draws at it next turn. Yeah, I didn't really get through for much damage there at all. Should have done the math. Which would have told me that it was going to be less than... Wow! That's... Yeah. Alright, so... Definitely in a bit of trouble here. Thopter Sword, given my aggressive deck of the business. <laughs> Blech. Well, we certainly have a lot of mana. So if I attack with Pyromancer, Pyromancer, and two Elementals, I get through for two or three at the most, and I lose a bunch of value, so it does not seem like a worthwhile trade. I think I was supposed to bring in Celestial Purge because it exiles Thopter Foundry. Probably. Opponent peeling all the lands they need now. Yeah, so Doctor Foundry plus some mana. Oh, okay, so that's just game. Cool, so they go infinite life. We got got. Okay. So Sarkin coming back is probably not bad, and Celestial Purge is probably worth having. I think the Chandras are less than great. Path is probably better than Lightning Bolt. Ah. No, I guess being able to Path and Urza is worth it, and then having to Path... We prefer not to Path a Emery. But I can't have too much clunk in the deck. It's off to a good start, but we uh, couldn't close it out against the uh, Thopter Foundry Sword. They found it real quick. Uh, that's a bonkers hand. Right? Is this completely un unreal? Yeah. Let's turn two Nahiri, or turn two Rest in Peace plus Birds, and then turn three Nahiri. I think we want the turn two Nahiri if we can get it. So, I have to go green-white on the land to make that happen. Go green-white on the land, and then we set the sprawl on red. OP hand. This is pretty OP. This is, this is kind of the, the, what we're looking to do here. Sunshine, don't blame it on the moonlight. Don't blame it on the 
Riptides, blame it on Emrakul. All right, here we go. Oh, no, Arbor Elf. The birds are just so beautiful. This, the Ravnica art for Birds of Paradise is gorgeous. I mean, the original is also great. Don't finally play Galvanic Blast. Don't do it. Have a heart. All right. Deal. Oh, I don't have a second green source to put the sprawl in the temple garden. All right. Hey, it's still pretty good. So I think this means I only have birds plus rip this turn. So. Yeah, there's no way to do that. That's fine. There's nothing in the deck that requires uh, double green, but this turn does for me. And then I've got double red anyway. So tap that for white, tap this for red. Play the birds for my green, play the rip for my red white. Okay. All right, enjoy your turn too, opponent. It's almost all I got. Man, I'm going to be able to crack in for one next turn. Yeah, that's true. I just didn't realize that I did that when I kept the hand. Um, I just, I'm just annoyed with my own ineptitude. It wasn't like a big punish or anything like that. Yeah, like the, the turn two here is going to be fine. They could have Metallic Rebuke here, and I th think I can pay for it, which is hilarious. All right, they got an Emery. Uh, Emery doesn't do anything right now, so... I should have held that mountain and looted it with the Nihiri. Um, it's fine. I can just choose to loot nothing with Nihiri because she's cool like that. Uh, nope. All right. Um, I'm just going to hang out here. If I have to, I will jump block with my birds. Yeah, they got a one mana one two that milled them for four into exile. God bless them. Yeah, all right. Nice Celestial Purge. All right, so we've got the Cripple Fight going between the 1-2 and the 1-1. One, one. Mine has a sweet mana ability, though. Oh, or we could just rip that. That'd be a good draw. Hey, guys, what if we just drew a Sarkin? I don't know. It seems like it could be good. And they can't rebuke that. Sook. All right, let's make a dragon. Mighty Dragon. Yeah, um, they could have four mana next turn. And post Urza, they'll have another two artifacts up, which is kind of not... Why are they responding to... Oh, they're probably just getting their F6 equity. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to leave my elf back, just because uh, being able to kill their Urza is probably valuable. <laughs> Because with the rest in peace in play, yeah, Urza's their best path to victory. All right, so Urza resolves, uh, construct trigger on the stack. Here's where we path them. Get out of here. Bannered. So they shouldn't, shouldn't be able to stop me, but they could just pool the mana. All right, so they have two mana. With, with what, I don't know what they intend to do with it, but just play some artifacts. Ah, yeah, that's a good one. They have a reasonable size construct as a 4-4. Four, four. But I'm cracking in for 8 in the air, and I've got a couple chuck blockers, so. Should be okay here. Smash. Dragon smash. Alright, and PS the turn. I only have to jump block the uh, the construct, so. Penta and Prism. Yeah. You can have as much mana as you want, friend. Oh, you should have equipped the sword, nerd! 
Okay, so they're attacking. Yeah, these triggers are just. Uh... Okay, they're both attacking Sarkin. I'm just going to chump block the construct. I'll let Sarkin take one here. They have more than enough artifacts in play, so if they had a metallic or um, galvanic blast, they just would have blasted Sarkin. They wouldn't they wouldn't bother their time on this. Ball shirt. I can swing for nine this turn, so going shields down for them was possibly foolish. You could have killed Emery, no. Yes, but I'd be giving up the lethal on my turn. Probably have cryptic. Ah, uh, yes, they could definitely have cryptic. There's nothing I can do about it if they have Cryptic. I suppose I could have gotten Chump Chump and then just made a second dragon this turn, but let's see. Alright. Nope. No Cryptic. I guess that they could do it during combat and bounce something. Are they whirring? Like, Yeah, whir would be pretty good, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so they're going to get Thopter Foundry. They're going to pick off my Arbor Elf. There's nothing I could do about this in either case. Other than, like, not swing, which I, I'm pretty sure I'm not doing there. So... You have to make two Thopters. And they can kill my Arbor Elf. And then they can definitely kill my Sarkin. But that's where we are. So we need to draw something good. Oh, I don't need to, but it'd be good. I would like to draw a good card. Please, deck. I should have played land there, but... I think they should have bobbled there. I don't think the extra one damage is going to matter all that much for them. Bye, Sarkin. All right. So they have infinite blockers for my Dargan, but I think we're priced into attacking anyway. Oh. I guess they're just going to make them to attack me. Seems fair. Alright. Uh, do that thing. Pass the turn. Okay, we're not dead yet, but definitely not looking good. We could top deck Chandra the Week with the Awakened Inferno, I guess, would be our best one. Another Sarkin would be okay, because it messes with their Thopters. Only the Construct would be able to attack against our Sarkin, because we'd get a second Dragon token. So We do have some outs. Nahiri would also be pretty... Ugh, second Thopter Foundry. Gross. Alright. Uh, that's not going to do it. Alright, we died. Urza deck is quality, even without Thopter sword combo. But we got some quick quick games going, so feel good about that. I did. I heard uh, several GPs got cancelled. It's like four GPs and two SCG events. Yeah, it's uh, this virus stuff is going uh, wild. Luckily, we're nice and safe here, playing internet games. Okay, so this is a pretty good draw, especially in the dark. We've got interaction. So. Water grave. Sure. This makes me think... The Ravnica watery grave always makes me think this has got to be Death Shadow, but the fact that they didn't shock it means this is almost definitely Urza again. That's a lot of lightning bolts, huh? Alright, so... I have a Blood Moon I'm going to play next turn, uh, which means I'm going to have to cut myself off of white, 
But if I go forest, put the sprawl on white, fetch a mountain with foothills, then I have access to all my colors. So I don't have double red, but any non-basic that I draw will be another red land, so that's fine. All right. I think we got there. It's like a, it's like playing Niv all over again. Turn to Blood Moon, baby. Welcome to modern. Yeah. Ah, oh, they've got a basic. Womp womp. Turn to Thopter Foundry. Yeah. So I can't actually play this season Pyromancer, so. I'm just priced into jamming this Blood Moon here, which kind of kind of sucks, but uh, compared to what we could be doing. But uh, hopefully we'll peel a land for next turn. And then we could play Nahiri or... This does have uh, a decent amount of value. Oh, man, what is that? <sighs> and I have nothing to play. Gross. <laughs> Sure. Why not? I believe Nahiri got hit cut from Niv. Nahiri was cut from modern Niv a long time ago. Um, she's still one of the best cards in Pioneer Niv. Good lord, this hand sucks against that. I mean, the fact that we're not doing anything is, is what, what really matters here. Okay. So we were against the player with the natural draw... Thopter Sword, and they played the turn two Foundry, which meant they didn't get blocked out by the by the Blood Moon in any way. That's uh, uh shoot. So I'm gonna bolt the one with the sword on it, just because um, there's a good chance we're going to discard at the, the beginning of the next turn anyway. If if they tap the Thopter Foundry for any reason, which there are reasons that they would, um, we do get to exile it with Nahiri. It's not likely, but it can happen. So that's definitely what we want to look out for. Oh, awesome. Second, second Blood Moon. Why not? <coughs> Just in case they get rid of the first one. You know, why not? Just in case they get rid of the first one. Yeah, exactly. This is the the double mulligan Blood Moon where it's like, oh, Blood Moon's irrelevant. Uh, I think I'm like like 50% to, to scooping out of this. I don't I don't think we're beating this. I'm going to give it one more draw, but I'm... I don't know if we have any answers for the, uh, the Thopter Foundry in the main deck. Yeah. Yeah, we're done here. All right. Reasonable hand, and we got meted out, displaying why the Urza deck is quality. Uh, I think we still want the Fulminator Mages. I think I want the Rest in Pieces, Celestial Purge, and Re and uh, Path to Exile. So I think Bolt's going out. I think Blood Moon's going out. And then one Chandra Acolyte of Flame. I think that's good. Yeah, Sark Sark a Resolve Sarkin would be okay, but uh we we weren't we weren't close to it. We we're two mana off. Oh and the ancient grudge, I need that. Uh It's weird. I don't want to board the Blood Moons out fully because I feel like they have some value, but I think what we're bringing in is better. Yeah, I think this is fine. Ah, uh, 
So we are a, what, 21 land deck? 23 land deck? 23 land deck. So I have a turn to play plus Ancient Grudge. I got a lot of turn three plays. All right, we're keeping this. Oh, last game we were basically drawing to nothing. I think I think we were just we had just done at that point. Okay, Lab, Babel, Land. 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 Do, do it. Draw the land. Dr mm. Hit the it's not a land. It's fine. We got this rest in peace. We got this rest in peace. We'll be able to kill their... Ha! Huh, really? Alright, so they must know what they're up to next turn. I sincerely hope you get rewarded for this keep. Me too! I don't keep these kind of hands wishing to get punished and die. Let me tell ya. That is not my thought process in the least. Which, sure is surprising. Is it Thought Foundry? If it is, we're gonna be- Oh, my happy boy! Alright, so... I think we just grudge this now. Kind of sucks because I have this rest in peace, so I don't get to uh, to keep my grudge. But uh, yeah, I think it's definitely worth doing. Well, they can't combo with it. Whereas I can season Pyromancer and try to draw to more gas. Uh, how greedy are we? Let me let me fetch for thinking time. Fulminators are pretty bad. They're bad for now. Uh, there's a good chance they play out non-basics. <laughs> Alright. Uh, I just I just ancient grudged. Now, I uh, we have plenty of time to start casting these spells. And they're stuck on lands. Sweet. Thoughtseize, Inquisition. Please. Please. Fatal push. Yeah. Alright. Land. Do it again. Do it again. Mm. Alright. Come on, little deck. You can do this. My opponent's not doing anything. Here comes the Emery. Oh. Backup Thopter Foundry? Sure. Oh, ah, well. Okay, so... So, yeah. Uh, Shadow doesn't work up to anything, so... Uh, I'm going to ditch... Both Fulminators? No, I'm going to ditch... a. The season pyromancer. No, the Chandra and the Fulminator. Chandra, Chandra and the Fulminator. Okay, well, there's a four mana Chandra. That's pretty good. So, and we can season pyromancer again next turn. <laughs> sure. Astrolabe is really nice with uh, Thought Profoundry, even in this kind of situation. Oh, they finally found another land. This is a basic again. Wow! They have the, the infinite Thopter Foundry draw. Okay, so they, they tapped out fully, so we're just going to crack in. I think I'm just going to put them under maximum pressure here. So we're going to play this Pyromancer, dump two Arbor Elves, try to draw a single land. Thank you. And then next turn, I can play Shange. Pyromancer's fine. Yep. Every thopter. All right, come on, boys, elemental boys. You've been my friends since I uh, played Mardu Pyromancer. It's time to go mess them up. Oh, yeah. Draw. Sick. All right. I'm gonna crack in with everything first. This will incentivize them to tap some amount of their mana, and then I can uh, play my Chandra post combat unmolested.
خوش نایس I think they're a sack of astrolabe here. Yeah, it's cool. So they go to 16, they pick off two of my elementals, and I'm down to four power on board, but then I also have this Chandra. They did not block. Huh. Does that mean that they are playing an Urza this turn? Because I can play Fulminir Mage and hold up this mana. I think getting the Chandra into the play has a higher upside. Yeah. No. All right, we're gonna we're gonna play a little more defensively. We're gonna play the Fulminir Mage and hold up the the Path to Exile. Girl. So I'm gonna. So no, Fulminator just just makes me smile. That pose is so great. Him and. Or Fulminator Mage and Endbringer. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright. Uh, sure, let's get attacking. How do you like my three mana tutus, Rai? You like Grey Ogre? I love, freaking love Grey Ogre, dude. Are they just gonna take eight? Come on. So, like, that's gotta be them telegraphing that they've got Urza, right? Because I think they want the maximum number of artifacts in play so they can play Urza and then have, like, Cryptic up. So, so we're going to keep this one white mana. Phyrexian Crusaders, Grey Ogre's older brother. Yes. Mystical Dispute. That's fine. Don't want to pay. I do. Game won't let me pay with one mana for three. Phyrexian Crusaders, Grey Ogre's older brother. Twice removed. All right, what do you got? Time sieve. Yeah. So they could they could go block block, take an extra turn, die, which is hilarious and wonderful. They're attacking. Okay, so they're gonna take the extra turn. That's that's this is wild. Good luck. It has to be, right? Like Uh they, yeah, I guess they could gain one life first. You could sack sack the astrolabe, make a thopter. Okay, so they missed. Alright. <laughs> what do you what do you do you have anything with your one mana? You could have made a thopter. You could have gained one life. What are you doing? All right. It's cool. It's cool. I would have missed it. K kind. Of, they could have fogged, but I think... Yeah, okay. They just... I don't like... Like, even if they draw an Urza, even if I don't have anything, I still kill them. So, it's not... Whatever. I think... Pretty happy with this sideboard setup. There's nothing else that I want back... I guess I could ditch the Fulminators, but, like, Chandra's not much better. Anger's definitely no good. Bolts are not great. I think I want Fulminator Mages on the off chance that they get to blow up some lands. Like, they could have a more non-basic heavy hand. What about Veil of Summer? Yeah, I guess I could have. <sighs> yeah, 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 you're both right. I haven't seen any discard spells from them, but I have seen both Fatal Push and uh, Counter Magic. So, yeah, I definitely should have. Yeah, I'm being bad. Don't worry about it. Uh, do I mull to five? Uh, 
Um, yeah, probably right. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess I can keep this. It does have all the mana that I need. It's got mana and ramp. Ah, yeah. I, I, I can see the argument both ways. I just, I hate going to five. But I guess I'm on the draw, so it's not as bad. Worst possible draw in the deck, pretty much. It doesn't do anything, Roy. Like, I, I, I think mulling this hand is pretty reasonable. Like, you, you're you counting on this hand to draw you into gas, specifically, and not more mana. Like, our first draw step is a pretty good example of why, why you would mull this hand. <laughs> Yeah, there's no game plan exactly. Now there's like kind of one, but like we very much lucked into that. Yeah, the game plan is a turn three Chandra with turn one ramp. Yeah, are you are you kidding me? Have you have you seen the deck they're playing, Roy? Like this is not. Yeah, Ch Chandra doesn't matter, right? Like they can just attack her down with an infinite number of creatures. Like she can kill one at a time, or kind of draw you one card per turn. And like right here is a perfect hand or a perfect situation where I should have Veil of Summer because they're definitely gonna have a counter. Um, so get one mountain, get a stamping grounds. Yeah, yeah, I just think that this deck is, like, more powerful and proactive than I think that you're... Or it's more proactive than maybe you're giving it credit for. <coughs> Alright, so out of these two, Nahiri is better. So I'm going to play, play the Chandra first, because I'm quite... Quite certain that, uh, oops. Quite certain that it's gonna eat a counter here. Alright. I apologize to you, Chandra. There should have been a, a Veil of Summer there to wreck my opponent. <laughs> I don't know. My brain is not in the right place with this uh, fever. Well, not fever. I don't have the fever anymore, but with this illness. Luckily, our opponent's doing a whole bunch of nothing so far. EE -E on one. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, don't force me... Bro, Brozette, Bro They, Brobot. Discard a card, yes. Discard Mom. Alright. Trigger. Alright, good luck, opponent. Illness in the ranks. There is illness in the ranks, yes. Oh, please, Thought Sees Me. Ah, why is there always natural draw Thopter Sword? What what is this? All right, so and now they've got infinite turns. If I let them on tap, boo! I have never seen draws like this out of that deck. All right, so draw discard. Yes, Jesus. Okay, well, I mean, we mized it. <coughs> oh, please, please do not. What is this? Okay, they're making a Thopter. That makes sense. Alright, alright, alright. Not as bad as it could have been. So, I'm not going to be able to ult my Nahiri until 
we draw a piece of removal or or otherwise but rest in peace one time i mean yeah gotta call your shots you just gotta knock the top of your deck and trust that you've been living a healthy healthy balanced lifestyle Chandra's not great here, so I'm going to discard the excess Nahiri, though, because it's considerably worse. Discard a card with Nahiri, yes. Discard the excess Nahiri. Foothills is not great. Um, so Chandra lets me put an extra loyalty. So if I play Chandra plus, a plus both my walkers this turn, and then next turn if I had been able to... I think it's just getting... Yeah, okay, cool. Um... Should have played this pre-combat, just in case that was Mystical Dispute. Didn't get punished, but easily could have. You could just minus two, sack on the Thopter, and make them sack the time stamp. Yeah. See, the yeah, this this is the problem with that line, is like it's really easy for them to just draw another artifact. Like, this is one of the situations where I'm like, oh, maybe I should have boarded in. Wow, that sucks. Um, this is a situation where I could have boarded in uh, anger. Wanted to keep the land in hand for the here. You're right. Uh, yeah. Yep. Just just playing badly. Don't mind me. So now Nahir is getting hit for seven, which means you can't exile this time sieve. Wah. All right. So... Losing mid-range fights in my mid-range decks, a deck against uh, Urza. Well, I guess it feels good because I do love playing Urza decks. All right, let's draw some fire. Come on now. I said let's draw some fire. Come on now. That's not good enough. Um, so I can kill the Thopter. But it doesn't really do anything, and I still lose both of them. I think I can. Yeah, let's see if I hit like Ancient Grudge off the top. Arbor Elf, sure. Let's play this sad little blocker. I think we're I think we're done here again. This deck seems to line up poorly against Urza. Like, they didn't even, like, draw any removal all game. Yeah, there's no fatal push. They just uh, had a engineered explosives that also didn't matter. It killed you two Arbor Elves, but it didn't really slow me down. We got to preserve one walker now. I mean, I guess, but, like... <coughs> they plus the Tezzeret, so, yeah, I guess so. Uh, they draw a fatal push, of course. So now we lose whichever one they want. <sighs> it's frustrating. This game we were actually close to Emmer cooling them, but they just like natural drew the Thopter Foundry in the Sword of the Meek. <laughs> So we're losing, uh, yeah, Chandra. Makes sense. Zero mana EE. -E. Sure, I guess they want to make that into a creature this turn. All right. Not going to do it. All right. So, 0 for 2, double Urza decks. Woof. Nobody playing Titan into me tonight. I'm just going to grab a tissue uh, as we're queued. Yeah, no, that was just, like, we just got housed in those games. It was not, didn't even feel close. 
<coughs> I mean, we took one game each time, and like it could have broken broken differently. I don't think we got to set up two planeswalkers a single time. Like they always had, uh, they always had the uh, celestial purge. Uh, this is turn two pyromancer. Yeah, seems fine. Oh my god, you coughed. Yep, I'm definitely sick. I do not have the coronavirus because I have a runny nose. I have the incorrect symptoms. Send them for you. Alright, cool. Get the boys in here. So I can get Temple Garden here, but I need double red next turn, so let's just get this. No, I can, yeah, I can get the Temple Garden here, right? No, I need to have a forest that is also a mountain to untap. All right. Opponent mull to six. Got a push your thought sees. Blackmail. Huh. So, 8 rack, you say. Very well. Okay, so I have no access to white now until I rip that. Um, so, play the sprawl here. I can put it on white. Yes, I can put it on white, no problem. Untap this. Tap this for red. Play the Pyromancer and discard both the cards. So, kind of sucks here. And then against 8 rack, we're definitely like low on cards in hand. Like the sprawl in play doesn't really help. I guess I should have just held the sprawl because putting it into uh, play doesn't actually gain me that much if I am against 8 rack. Yeah. But we do have four power in play, so there's a chance we just get here, get there with this. So I'm just gonna start attacking with this and not do anything else, and hopefully we win the game that way. Um, if I draw a five mana play, I can play it. If I draw a six mana play, I can play it. Mind draw. Yep. Uh, hold. Hold the land that. Uh, I could choose not to have me deal damage. Oh, that gives them mana. And they also get to draw a card. Forgot this was a thing. Alright, enjoy, opponent. I hope you cannot completely devastate me with that black black I just gave you. And the card. Gross. Ugh. Alright. If we lose to waste not 8 rack, I'm... Uh, I'm going to be less than pleased. <laughs> it's a great piece of art on blackmail. I love it. Christopher Moeller is one of my favorites. I think we throw this deck in the virtual trash can if we lose. Definitely getting close. Go for the throat, my Arbor Elf. Sure. They, they tanked on it for a minute. They were like, ah. I guess killing the Pyromancer means I get two tokens, so. They're a little flooded, which I guess is pretty good for us. Rack. But if this is Liliana... Mind rot. Well, that's gonna hurt. <sighs> okay, so I'm taking three damage a turn. Alright. 
and so are they, but I'm, I'm slightly ahead of this, so. Shrieking Affliction. I am no longer ahead. Necrogen Mist. I am definitely not ahead. I'm fairly likely to die. Goodness gracious. And they got to draw off me discarding the Nahiri. Okay. So now with the Necrogen Mist in play, I want to play this because I'm going to lose it next turn anyway. So I think this puts them to seven. Next turn I can put them to four. So if for some reason they take one damage and I top deck a bolt, I guess I can kill them. Because I'm about to take six. Uh, worth noting, this does not specify a effect that they control. So I'm definitely boarding out Pyromancer in this matchup. Pyromancer and Blood Moon just being atrocious here. So, just attack with these, and then we're, we're dead before we can do anything. Cool. Alright, let's go game two. So, Celestial Purge seems real good. Uh, Veil is the nuts. Ancient Grudge is fine. And then I think Blood Moon definitely coming out. Pyromance is really bad, but only once they resolve something, so I guess it's not that bad. Yeah. I guess I could play... No. I'm just going to take out one of the... Acolyte of Flames? No, one of the Pyromancers. Let's just take out one. This is a really, really poor deck against what their strategy is, because we're just trying to play out our hand as quickly as possible onto the board, and that's exactly what they want. They have a reasonable amount of removal. Alright, um... This is slow, but I definitely don't want a mulligan, so I'm going to keep this. Alright. So, fetch basic. Yeah, we're... we're we're keeping anything, Roy. And we peaked over 4,000 views in the last uh, 28 days on the channel, so. Uh, I guess I'll discard a land that deals damage to me. Assuming that I'm going to pick up one more at some point. Well, Pyromancer's kind of on time, so it's, yeah, small fish, but it's something. So I think we play Pyromancer here, and I think I discard Chandra Land. So Nahiri can exile enchantments, which is really, really good here. I feel like the other option is just to discard Nahiri and Chandra, but then it gives me nothing to play next turn. I think I'm going to... Yeah, so I drew a land. <coughs> yeah. No, no, that, that was... Yeah. I just... So if they have... Uh, yeah. Alright, so... I think I discard Temple Garden Nahiri here. Because then next turn, if I draw a land, um, I can play the land, play the Pyromancer, go up cards. Which... It sucks because obviously like Nahiri is really good in this matchup, but... 
Yeah, there we go. So didn't didn't get punished. Keep chesty dude. Yeah, he's a sex bomb. He's a love machine. Oh, that's the song I was trying to trying to remember yesterday. He's just a love machine. And he don't want nobody but cards. Bow bow. Just a love machine. A hug and kiss and fiend. Oh, look, Nahira came back to us. So now we've got six power, which ain't not bad. She's back, baby. It's Brittany, bitch. Drown in sorrow. Vomit. God bless it. It just feels like everyone's just completely out to get us tonight. Oh. I mean, I guess... They're at freaking 17. This deck sucks. I thought this was going to be a fun romp, but we're not playing, like, like the really unfair stuff. Like, um, what is it? Um, like, Chalice. Like, this isn't, like, the the uh, Sun and Moon prison decks of, of the yonder years. Yeah. I'm gonna play this out, this league out for science, but uh, if this is a one and four deck, I think it's oh my god, hostile desert, and now the streaking affliction, and I'm gonna to top deck a land that isn't a white producing land, and we're just gonna be, we're just gonna be donezo. Nope, 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 even worse. So, the the quandary here is, do I play out this land and guarantee that I can't escape the Shrieking Affliction? They've got a Raven's, Raven's Crime in their graveyard, so there's, there's basically 0% chance that they don't have a discard spell. So, I am going to do that, but it's, yeah, this is rough. Play land so we can play chess, dude. We already could have done that. <coughs> Activate his ability. Yeah, that's a reason to do that. I mean, we're n we're gonna die before that's relevant, but you're you're not wrong. We are definitely gonna die before that's relevant. <laughs> They're attacking my Chandra. Okay, she's real bad, dude. So I mean, you go nuts. Oh my god. I mean, yeah, technically, that'll do it. I'm putting this on white. <laughs> Woof. The retrace fuels their land, creature land. I want to play that deck. Yeah, yeah, that's... It's definitely uh, there's some some slick eight rack technology happening. I do I do definitely have a list in my my list of moto decks for for I probably this version of eight rack because I was combing the deck dump for just different things that I might want. Okay, I mean play Sarkin and then attack with my Chandra and then die. Let's let's see if they can fatal push my Chandra. I wanna I wanna see I wanna see complete failure here. It's actually kinda close to killing them. Let's see if they can activate revolt and then push my Chandra. Can you do it? So Sar Sarkin doesn't give my my planeswalkers haste, so unfortunately he can't attack, and even if he could, we'd only put them to one and we'd still die on our upkeep. So, O2 to 8 rack. Good god. This is <laughs> a dumpster fire night. <clears throat> Should have stuck to playing the uh, mindless aggro decks. I say mindless. Infect is very, very intricate and difficult to play until your opponent taps out and then you just kill him.
yeah, Team Aero is going to be great. I'd like it known that I beat the trophy leader, Tunneling Cat, and Insano in the same night. Just, I am a competent Magic player, I swear. This was either from, like, a Moto Preliminary or a 5-0 list or, um, what was the other thing? The SCG Regionals? I think this was an SCG Regional list. I just, I, I do not know. They just must have gotten so lucky with their, with their draw and their curve. I mean, I guess we've only played against Urza twice, where we had pretty close games, but then we got just dumpstered by A-Rack, so... With drowning sorrow out of the sideboard, like what? What do you even do? All right, winning die rolls. Let's 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 get on the scoreboard. This is a pretty ideal hand. I mean, Oh, don't lava dart me, bro. Brosephine, Brosette, Brosetta Stone. <laughs> All right. So playing Pyromancer, which means I need a stamping grounds, which kind of sucks. And then I'm discarding a land and a Pyromancer. So I assume I want to get Nahiri to play next turn. Although maybe I just want to get a second Pyromancer and play next turn. Doesn't doesn't feel great to shock against that deck. Um, I'm definitely not um, discarding both of my spells, but I think actually holding on to Pyromancer might be the second Pyromancer might be okay here. I don't think I want to discard both lands, but I think Nahiri is not a bad discard here. I think I just want to draw some removal. So both of these can get white, but I don't. I don't need to get white red. That was not a great draw. All right. Gardach. They're a Klingon word for depression. Ah, yes. So, wait, I don't think it was depression. Loneliness. They're a Klingon word for loneliness. Ah, yes. Gardach. All right. So. Forked Bolt. I have never seen that in a prowess list before. And here we are playing a deck with Mana Dork and a... Good lord. I mean... Yeah, sometimes this is the way it goes, I guess. Sometimes you magic, sometimes you get magic Okay, so... I can play the Sprawl this turn, but if I do, I go down an extra card. Um, so I think I just play the Pyromancer and ditch these two lands. Just put more bot or the, the land in the Sprawl puts more bodies into play. O3 bracket has special lists. Yeah, I'm I'm playing with the Canadians in here. I come from Canada and they think that I'm slow, eh? I have no idea why the Simpsons gave him like that like like Ukrainian ish kind of accent or something. Bolt. Yeah, of course. Going to my face. <coughs> Light up the stage. Of course. So if they draw land here, and if they have a crash through in hand, they have land and swift spear. Gross. So if they play the swift spear and swing, we get to double block, soul scar, and then chump block. 
All right. So if they have Lava Dart here, I get completely blown out. So I think I just chump block the Soul Scar. <coughs> Man, they have so many cards left in hand too. I think I can't afford to take more damage. Can I afford to take... Yeah, they can put me to three really easily if I don't block. So. Okay, so... Chandra, blow up a Soul Scar Mage. And pray, I guess. Yet another matchup where it feels like we're woefully underprepared. Alright. Alright, Roy, you've been modded, I believe. The next time you type, you should have a sword. Oh, another light up sage. Sure. Why not? I guess that means they're not okay. So they lose this Swiss spear unless they have a land in hand. No, okay, they don't. <coughs> they just want to attack unmolested. All right, are they gonna split them? No, they're not. Okay, so I'm losing my Chandra either way here, so I just let that happen. And then next turn I can make two chump blockers. Uh. So I guess if we draw into Chandra Awakened Inferno. The eyedropper symbol, sure. I uh did you get your eyedropper from a doctor, Roy? I think you might want to get your next eyedropper from like a doctor. So they got Bedlam Reveler coming next turn, so we're just we're just gonna get ground out of this game. Which is honestly one of the most impressive parts about the Red Prowess deck uh, that I did not get to use at all yesterday, really, was the Bedlam Reveler. I think the only time I cast the Bedlam Reveler, the game was already over. They just. I was just doing the rub ins because I had a sick combo turn with like two Steamkins out. Hey, look! Speak of the devil. Uh, they don't land, right? I cannot. <sighs> sure. Is it? I don't. What? Okay. Not exactly sure what's happening here, but I'm okay with it. So if I top deck Chandra Awakened Inferno, I'm like. <coughs> oh no, I can't cast that. I need one more. Don't you also go to Dr. S.A. Tan? I... I do not. Alright, so... Chump Blocker... Chandra... Chandra shoot down the steam can. Alright. So one of the things about this deck is I feel like, for my personal preference, it would be like nice if I was playing some good god. Um, if some of my ramp wasn't in creatures, so that I could play some kind of wrath effects. Like that's one of the upsides to playing something like Sun and Moon, which is like a, a red white prison deck, is that you get to play a bunch of wrath of gods 
because you don't have any mana creatures. You don't have any creatures at, at all. Because this is like a very heavy Planeswalker plan. And the reason we have creatures, obviously, is to... Um, okay, so they've got Trample here, so I'm not going to block one damage. Um, Nahiri. It's not good enough, I don't think. They've got three cards in hand. Like, I don't know. This game feels pretty pointless. I think I'm going to exile one of their guys and then hop out. I I've seen everything from their deck that I need to. Mana dorks suck unless they're noble hierarchs. I am of the same opinion. Um, it's not actually true. Like, I've played Birds of Paradise decks that I enjoy, but generally speaking, I just I hate playing mana dorks. And again, like, obviously the mono green card deck is an exception, but... Okay, so, mono red. So, we've got Anger. And we've got Weather the Storm. But, like... I can't see how this is actually going to result... In a game going well for us, but... Alright. Yeah. Seems like this is a matchup we really don't have. We are always getting dunked, this league. Yeah, we are always getting dunked. This, this deck is just not doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, I'm mulling that. I mean, I guess we keep this, but if we get Lava Darted... Like, we ran into the frickin' Forked Bolt... You want Purge and Path, you want to max out on removal. I, I, yeah, I guess I could have. Yeah, you're probably right. <coughs> yeah, I'm putting the Sarkin on the bottom. Alright, I mean, I'm just, I mean, I'm just playing badly, because I, I don't really know how I'm supposed to play this deck, but, uh... It still has felt pretty, pretty awful. And like this hand, we're going to have to take five to do anything on turn two. It feels like max, like it feels like playing uh, path against them is, is nuts, but I'm not a path player, so I, I really always have a problem like figuring out where I'm supposed to be playing path. All right. Uh, so we play Chandra this turn, and then Chandra next turn, hopefully, and then we got something going on this game, maybe. If I draw into a land so we can play the big Chandra next turn, or medium Chandra next turn, then, uh... <coughs> yeah, Utopia's probably would have been really good. Just want to keep them off creatures. That's fair, like, I understand, like, the combo nature of their deck. Well, we're going to be able to keep them off creatures here, at least. I'm going to get a mountain, because again, we have double green already, and we don't even need it, but we definitely need excess. And then we're actually going to use uh, Acolyte of Flame to put an extra loyalty counter on Chandra this turn. So even though I have to minus this one... Small Chandra seems awful in this deck, if I'm honest. I think I completely agree with you. I, I think it's really cute. But, like, it seems really bad. There's, like, no spells worth splashing back, except maybe if you have a Lightning Bolt. So, I think if I was ever to play this deck or a deck like it again, that would be something I'm, I'm not looking forward to playing again. Alright, so we're going to lose our big genre here. If they have literally anything. Yeah, that's, that's definitely her most powerful mode. Uh, unless you're playing um, the the standard cards, like Mayhem Devil, because uh, Mayhem Devil is whenever a player sacks a permanent, you get to ping something, and so her two elementals give you two triggers, 
And then you also play other sacrifice synergies. So she's really good in like a dedicated sacrifice deck, but you flip Lavadart and crash through. Yeah. Well, the here is a pretty good draw. Yeah, like that's the thing is that yeah, the Sarkin's definitely in there for like the the critical mass of Planeswalkers, which you never gotten to do. Like I I I do not understand how this came out of having a good result. So I can exile the Swift Spear, and if they don't have another creature, then my Nahiri will survive, which is, like, kind of okay, I guess. Like, we're kind of drawing hot fire this game, but as soon as we draw land or another Chandra Acolyte of Flame, we're going to be in trouble they cycle crash through they cycle another crash through well that's a good start they cycle a third crash good god well i mean at least their hand was pretty atrocious lava dirt my arbor elf yeah so nahiri survives and that's a really good draw finally get to get rid of this chandra Yeah, we got two mana dorks. I'm gonna put a uh, loyalty. So we can actually ult Nahiri next turn, assuming she takes zero damage against the deck full of burn spells. <coughs> um, can we? No, I, I did my math wrong. Never mind, we can't do that. Unless we cheat. Which I'm pretty sure my opponent won't let me do on the Moto Client. If I'd kept the other Chandra, I could zero this Chandra, play another Chandra, zero that Chandra, and then Alt Nahiri, which actually would have been worth doing. But, uh, all right, Steamkin, sure. So I've got just the cure for that thing. And this Chandra having, like, infinite loyalty is kind of okay now. So we might we might actually have a game we win here. We might might get one. We did get one each against the Urza decks. Like, this 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 deck's not, like, they're spiking me. Sure. So when they play their next spell, we're going to kill the Steamkin in response. Soulscar Mage, sure. They've got one card in hand. They do have a Lavadart in their graveyard. Okay. Could have gotten punished there. Didn't. We've won two games this league, yes. Correct. Okay, uh, so... Can I do this first? Yes, I don't want this armor elf. Seasoned Pyromancer is great here. Thank you, deck. <coughs> hey, look, the exact situation that this deck wants to be in finally came up. All right, um, I technically have four here. So, I don't know why I needed to qualify that with technically. So we're going to do this, and I think we're going to plus Chandra for mana, minus the other Chandra for... Um, uh, to, to flashback the bolt. Wait, do I have all the mana? No, I don't. I'm an idiot. Forget me. Can we win a match? That's the idea. Ugh. Why is my brain mush? Okay. I would like to cast this lightning bolt. Bye, Salt Garbage. Alright. So, missed an attack for one here. Given that I'm going to Emrakul them next turn, if they will allow that, I don't think it's a problem. There is a Lavadart in their graveyard, but we can uh, use Chandra Acolyte of Flame to uh, put an extra loyalty counter on Nahiri. 
spike me. Sure. And they've got one lava dart. So if they've got a bolt here, we just die. I light up the stage. That's terrifying. There's a lava spike, so we should be dead. Super. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you just gotta laugh sometimes, I guess. I have never played a deck that has gone 0 for 4 like this. Uh, I've gone 1 and 3 and then had to uh, try to play last one, and I've gone 1 and 4 off of that, but I've never gone 0 for 4. We're playing the last one for science. I'm not, I'm not giving up on this one. I want to have one good game. Let's hit Titan. Let's hit Titan. Let's win with two turn two Blood Moons. Make them salt off. We'll steal their tickets. And then we'll scoop out because we'll actually we'll let them keep their play points because we're on the we're on the O O four, so we, we can't get anything back anymore. This match is just for funsy. Alright. Um keeping this hand because screw it. Got a turn two pyromancer. We get to churn a little bit, so. All right. And we're getting down on it. I got cool in the gang on. Yeah, like most hands with this deck, screw it. I, 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 do, I mean, this is the de this is the the kind of proactive deck where you're just like this hand has something it can do. The pyromancer is going to draw me two new cards anyway, so it's not like the decks that I normally want to play. It's not like the decks that my good buddy Brian here normally wants to play. It's not even like the decks that like Roy wants to play because Roy pl playing in fact like you really you really have to have like a solid game plan from the start. Whereas, like, this one's just like, I don't know, if we've got some stuff we can start doing, we just, we have to assume that our deck lines up. Alright, I'm going to pitch Stamping Ground and Sh Big Chandra, because Little Chandra is at least castable next turn, and uh, the Arid Mesa can get me a white source, although there's a Sacred Foundry. Even Roy wouldn't play this deck. That's not what I said. I was just saying that you you play infect and, and infect like you you specifically want to mold to having a specific game plan, whereas like the decks that Brian and I are are playing, there's some matchups where that's true, but generally speaking, you just want to like have a, a hand that casts some number of spells, and then as the game goes on, you'll you'll figure out what you're up to. Abrupt decay, my utopia sprawl. Sure, it actually kind of really works out with this hand, so. Surgical My Utopia Sprawl. What the hell have we hit here? This Sultai Mill? Ugh, 04 bracket. This is uh this is where the real the real brewers are faithless. I'd like to point out that they left the one in my graveyard. Uh, it's right here. So, if I was truly a, a brewer that was faithless, I would have uh, Ox of Agonis in this deck. Which, by the way, I feel like Ox of Agonis would be awesome in this deck. Because in our previous games, like, we have nothing to do with our graveyard, and, like, with Nahiri and Pyromancer, like, we really, really stock them up very heavily. Yeah, it's it you're hundred percent right. And like but the, the the classic thing about this deck is look at my opponent in this game. If we had the Blood Moon They saw our deck and decided it was best for us to keep our cards. That's insulting. 
this this is just a it's a, it's like a, it's it's a meta call deck, right? Like if if you run into nothing but Titan, I'm sure this deck is nuts. <laughs> Oh, look at these ones from Chandra. Oh, they think they're so fancy because they've got haste. Let me tell you something. Haste don't mean shit. So we're actually kind of killing our opponent here. Which is more than I can say about what this deck has done in the other games we've played. And, like, even if they have a Wrath here, we kind of bounce back pretty hard, so... Bonnie Tyler's holding on for a hero just kicked on. <laughs> Uro. Nah. No, I, I don't think we're winning any any matches. I did play against a really sweet deck yesterday, which was uh, blue-green turns with Uro. It was super sweet. So do I have lethal through the Uro? I've got six, seven, eight. So not quite. We're screwed. Uh, it's uh, it's not that bad yet. We'll see. Uro's so good. Uro is very good. Yeah. Um, th I thought they were gonna play with no audience was the deal. They were going to play the NBA games, but they weren't going to let anyone but the players into the stadium. Which is like... That's like... This is some, like... Uh, Sci-fi, apocalypse movie shit going on. Alright, so Fulminator seems nuts here. Um, and I don't really know what else they're doing, but I'm going to bring in Veil of Summer as well. I think that's it. So little Chandra is like generally garbage here. Blood Moon's probably nuts, and then Bolt seems less than spectacular. I think we this is how we do it. This is how we do it. I think Rest in Peace is probably good. Uh, yeah, they're definitely playing Udo. It's Purge hits Black Red, so no. Path is probably good here to get rid of Uros. So, cut one. Chandra. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Cut one. Sarkin. Because I want to. I want. I would like to get a turn two four drop. Four out one Sarkin. Yeah. All right. I nailed it. They canceled the game tonight. Twenty minutes before it was scheduled. Woof. There was a presumptive positive on the Utah Jazz team member. Oof. All right, so no acceleration into this Blood Moon means I'm mulliganing this, especially on the draw. This hand is all acceleration and a Veil of Summer. Yeah, can't keep that. There we go. That's like almost a hand. Although this hand's more like a foot. All right, so we ramp on one, ramp on two, and then Nahiri. Yeah, I think that's the best we can do. Unfortunately, I had to bottom the path, so got to get a little lucky here. But I guess we, we always had to get lucky with this deck. Uh, we're up all night. All right, uh, I'm playing Arbor Elf here because if I top deck a Sprawl, then we have the chance to go nuts. <laughs> Oh, no, we don't, because we don't have the second green again. Man, this deck is so awkwardly constructed, because, like, if... Yeah, if you go and look, there's two snow-covered mountains and a plains. Like, there's so many basics. Ah, man, I... Oh. Sweet was directed at Mulganing, not the Epidemic. Or the, yeah, no kidding. And my opponent that was on all non-basics last game, two basics. And there's the Blood Moon. Of course. 
of course. Why why wouldn't we draw the Blood Moon in this game? And I think like I think I play it right. No, I think I play the birds. I think they've got mana up, so there's like a chance there was like a remand. I get to crack in for one here. Maybe they tap down this turn. Play birds first. Nailed it. Hedron Crab. Okay. What? <laughs> All right. We're in the the. This can't be Sultai Crab Vine, right? Like th this this. It can't be. They played an Uro last game in like seven mana. Okay, they milled me. I guess that makes sense with the main deck uh, surgicals. <coughs> they assassins trophy my art. Sure. Yeah. That's a way to do that. All right, uh, I've got double red and a green, so I'm gonna get the planes just in case. So I can jam Chandra here and blow up the crab. I think that's what we're gonna do. Don't force me, sweet. Get out of here. They probably have Merfolk Secret Keeper too. I Soul Time Mill, but they had so like they have Uro in their deck. Like what are they? What are they doing? Mesmeric Orb. Yep. No, they're never going to tap it. Okay, so we're down to 40 cards, 39 cards. <coughs> this fifth mana means I can get tokens out of the Pyromancer in my graveyard, so I think that's what we're going to do. The orb has arrived. Yeah, I think I think we do nothing for now. I might make the tokens at the end of their turn. I think I should. But then we've got four damage per turn, so at that point we definitely don't need to do more. And I want to... I guess if I was going to sack this Arid Mesa, I should have done it before the draw step. Mystic Sanctuary, yeah. They get Glimpse back? That's pretty good. <coughs> so if we go to game three, we definitely want uh, Ancient Grudge in here. Might even want our bolts back or pass out. It's kind of neat. I guess Uro gives them another uh, angle of attack. And they're going to mill one over every game with uh, Mesmeric Orb when they play it. So, like, it means they'll always have something to do with their mana. So, rest in peace will be good also next game if we need it. Woof. All right, so we're down to 29 cards. Oh, yeah, we've got an Emrakul in our deck. I hope they don't have their Surgical in hand right now. Oh, 
Oops, we won! I completely forgot that that was a thing. Oh my god, that's amazing! Oh no! Oh, I should have responded by using the Pyromancer ability! I was just so blown away! I wasn't even thinking about it! Oh, that's great. Magic's great. Alright. Alright, opponent. I guess I can play this Nahiri then. So. <laughs> what do I even do? Like. I guess before I do this. I should. I could play Nihiri and Pyromancer this turn? Or Blood Moon to knock them, lock them out. Yeah, I think we'll play the Blood Moon. So get the mana. Oh, I put the I put the sprawl on a non-basic. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't thinking that I was gonna be playing the, the Blood Moon, so. But uh I clearly goofed that. It's okay. We'll be fine. I think we're gonna I think we're gonna get there. Alright, uh Blood Moon. I don't know, I'm I'm just missequencing all over the place. This this game is this is garbage fire. Discard my pyromancer. Yes. Sort of like mentally in shock from the the Emrakul happening and just being like, oh yeah, I guess they're screwed. Like, are they gonna mill out before me? I guess they will. <laughs> I literally, I just forgot Emrakul had that clause, so they're screwed. I'm gonna definitely take a minute between uh, this match and the next one to uh, go make some some hot water with lemon, like some kind of pansy. Oh, we did bring in the rest in peace. I'm an idiot. They have darkness in their deck. If I must die, I will encounter darkness as a bride and hug it in mine arms. William Shakespeare, Measure for Measure. See. That's like look at that art. This this is Magic the Gathering to me. This this is what it should look like. This is what it should sound like. Game plays exactly the same. You can still have the the Jastis League and the Super Friends BS and all that. You just give it a slightly different tone. Uh sure. Exile the top. Sarkin. Sure. Let's 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 just kill him. Why don't we just crack in for, for a bunch here, huh? Getcha. Alright. Your move, Yugi boy. <sighs> oh, no, 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 no. No! I was not going to let them have the win. Shoot. Alright. Alright. So, this deck was a complete garbage fire. Naya, Nahiri, Moon. Um, I think it's probably better if you run into non-stop Titan. But other than that, I don't. Oh, I don't know. Especially this card. This was such a garbage fire in this deck. She just did so much nothing. Um, they added White and Nahiri and Chandra to the kind of stock red-green Blood Moon get you dead deck. So I don't think that's any good. <laughs> but if you want a, an interesting time where you play against your own deck trying to win, uh, fire this one up. Anyway, uh, I'm going to throw it over to the in-between screen while we swap over to... Another version of uh, Teamer, Uro, Cryptic, and Six. So stay tuned. Thanks all my friends for hanging out here in the chat, making this as middlingly successful as it has been. 
And uh, if you're done for the night, have yourself a wonderful evening. Have yourself a wonderful week. Keep yourself safe and healthy. And if not, stick around and we'll get over to that one. Came up with the Mildex only weakness. A single copy of Emrakul. One spaghetti mom. Mom spaghetti.